guys, Mr. Klein here with our first lesson of our chapter on the properties of matter. This first lesson we're going to be talking about physical properties, the next lesson chemical properties, and after that we'll be talking about different types of substances. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, what we have right here is a picture of the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, where the Hubble Space Telescope took photos of galaxies that are billions of light years away, really, really far away from Earth. So my question for you is this. How much, these galaxies are obviously huge, thousands of light years across and things like that. And my question for you is this, how much of the universe do you think consists of stuff, you know, like stars, galaxies, sandwiches, your bicycle, things like that? Think for a second. Is it 50%? 20%? 10%? Not even close. In fact, as far as we know, the entire universe, only 5% of the universe consists of physical things like galaxies in your school lunch. The rest of it is just empty space. So whenever we talk about uh, matter, we're actually only talking about a really small part of the universe, even though it seems like so big for us. But let's go ahead and let's define matter right here. Matter is anything that has mass and volume, okay? or anything that has mass and takes up space. If it has atoms and stuff like that, and it takes up space, we consider it matter, okay? And in order to explain what matter is, we need to look at its properties. Uh, there's two main categories of properties we look at in terms of matter, physical and chemical properties. We will discuss chemical properties later in our next lesson. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be focusing on physical properties right here. Simply put, a physical property is a property of matter that can be observed without a chemical reaction. Okay, as a result, most things we describe when talking about matter are actually physical properties. Things like color, uh, what state of matter it's in, stuff like that. Those are all physical properties. Now, before we get too much further in this lesson, we need to start defining some stuff. Okay, uh, exactly what is matter. Now, we did say that matter... Uh, is anything that has mass and takes up space. But what exactly is mass? Well, an important physical property of matter is its mass or the amount of matter in a substance or an object. Okay, we count the number of atoms and all of those parts that gives us the mass. The basic unit of measuring mass is the gram. The metric system uh, base unit is gram. Though a lot of times we will use the kilogram here in the United States because the kilogram is kind of sort of close to the pound. But remember, good scientists only use the metric system. So for our purposes, we'll use the base value of the gram. And we usually measure mass using a scale. In the lab, in our lab, in our class, we'll be using the triple beam balance scale like this. And we're going to get back to that uh, graphic organizer in a second. The way a triple beam balance scale works is you put an object right here on the plate and you slide these bars and these weights until it balances out at zero. That way you can say that the amount of mass right here is the same as the amount of mass that's sitting on the plate. So that's how we measure mass of an object. Let's go back to this graphic organizer, and this is the physical properties of matter. As you can see, we have a whole lot of physical properties that we're going to look at in this lesson. So make sure you make your shapes to where you can uh, write the term and also draw an example or define it in order for you to understand. So we're going to start off with mass. It's got a straight line that's thick in order to say that it's directly connected to the physical properties of matter. So remember, matter is anything that has mass that takes up space, and mass is simply the amount of matter it has. Okay, we use to measure using the metric system. Now, when we talk about mass in everyday life, we usually say how much something weighs. Okay, in science, there is a difference between mass and weight. For example, we might say, oh, well, you weigh 75 kilograms. Well, you don't really weigh that. You have a mass of 75 kilograms. As we just learned, mass is how much matter is in an object. Weight, on the other hand, is something a little bit different. All it is is the amount of gravity that is pulling down on an object. Now, the basic unit of measuring weight is the Newton because it's a force. We'll talk a whole lot about forces later this year, but I'm introducing it right now. That weight, we use the Newton in order to measure it. That's the metric unit. Okay, on Earth, the amount of gravity pulling down on the object is about the same as its mass, okay? So the amount of gravity pulling down on an object that has a mass of one kilogram or 1,000 grams is 9.8 or about 10 newtons, okay? On Earth, we kind of equivalent, 
uh, make uh, equivalent the concept of mass and weight, but it makes a big difference when we go to other planets and stuff. So, I mean, whenever, so we can add this, okay, because mass depends on weight. So weight is a physical property. So go ahead and add this. And we're going to put a dotted line between mass and weight because they're related, okay? So let's go ahead and let's look a little bit of, into weight. Okay, whenever we go on a scale, we're me actually measuring weight because what happens is gr when you step on the scale, gravity pulls you down and the weight scale moves as a result of it. Okay, so that's how we use a weight scale in order to determine weight, the amount of gravity pulling down. But remember, weight is different from mass because we can tell like this. So on Earth, I have a 10 kilogram mass. Okay, I put it on a weight scale. It says 10 kilograms. Its weight measures at 98 newtons. Okay, remember 9.8 meters per second times 10 kilograms. Okay, that's where you get the 98 newtons of weight pulling down. So we take the same 10 kilograms to the moon. The moon has one sixth of that of the gravity. Okay, uh, as you can see, the weigh scales in at 1.6 kilograms. We go out into space where there is no appreciable gravity. There's zero kilograms on the weight scale. Now, the reason why is there's no weight pulling down on it. There's no newtons of force. So just remember that mass stays the same, but gravity, uh, the amount of gravity an object has acting upon it changes its weight. Okay, so that's the difference between mass and weight. Now, let's talk about some more physical properties right here. Okay, so we've already talked about mass. We've already talked about weight. Speaking of which, if you were in my class, you heard me talk about the whole concept of dropping bags of feathers and rocks whenever we talk about the scientific method. So we have 10 kilograms of feathers, 10 kilograms of rocks, each in a bag. Which bag is heavier? Well, they both have the same mass. But will their bags be the same size? Okay, they'll have the same weight, remember, because gravity pulls on all objects the same. But if you pour them into the same size bag, the feathers are going to take up more space than the rocks will. That's because the feathers have more volume. Volume is the amount of space matter takes up. Okay, the more volume something has, the more matter that's floating around in the particular space. Volume can be dependent on many things, temperature, pressure, and things like that. And it also changes based on the state of matter, which later on we talk about states of matter. We'll see how that's related. Uh, so that is volume. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add it to our, uh, let's add it to our graphic organizer. We're going to add volume right here. We have a straight line. So because volume is a physical property of matter. And we have something right here we're going to about to connect to. Okay, so volume is the amount of matter in a space. Okay. And whenever we want to find volume, we have a really easy method to do it. So if you add water to a measuring container, such as a graduated cylinder, you figure out how much water is in there. You drop the object in gently into the graduated cylinder and you see it goes up some. You measure the volume of the water with the object in it. You subtract the difference that tells you how much volume the object has. It always works because liquids have a fixed volume, which whenever we talk about the states of matter, I'll explain some more later. And we'll use this in our class whenever we want to measure the volume of something. So let's look again at our feathers. Okay, We can put them in a bag or we can put them in a smaller box. If I put them in a trash bag, 10 kilograms fit pretty easily. But if I put them in a smaller box, I'll end up having to stuff the feathers in really tightly. Both containers contain 10 kilograms of feather, but the box has a much smaller volume. So how do we describe the difference between the feathers? One's in a much smaller volume than the other one. Well, we say the feathers in the box have a higher density, or how closely packed the particles of matter are. The higher the density, the more mass there is in a particular volume. Okay, so what I could actually do with my boxes of feathers is I could stuff the feathers in and then drop the boxes into the bag. And what would happen is once we filled the bag to the same as we would putting in the feathers loose, it would be much heavier, have much more mass. That's because the feathers are squished in even more. And that's density for you. So let's go ahead and let's add this in. Now, density is dependent on two things, like I just said, the mass and the volume. So you want to make sure you put dotted lines between the two, uh, between mass and volume connecting the density to show that they're related. Okay. So you might be still kind of not quite sure about density. So let's go ahead and look at this. Okay, how tightly mapped the matter is, the amount of mass in a given space. The less dense, you have more matter just kind of floating around with empty space. More dense, you have more of it sitting together. 
And now gas has the least amount of density. Solids have the most amount of density. And whenever we talk about state of matter, states of matter, we will go back to this. Okay, so keep this in mind. Gas is the least density. Solids have the most density. Liquids are in between. And this depends on temperature, pressure, and stuff like that. So we talked about the big physical properties. We talked about mass, weight, volume, and density. But there's some other ones. Okay, some other ones could include things like its freezing and boiling point, its ability to conduct heat electricity or electricity, its color, how hard it is, or whether it's able to dissolve when placed in another substance. There's a lot more than this, but we'll just get into we'll just get into the basics for here since we are just talking about this at a junior high level. So, let's go ahead and let's finish filling out our physical properties of matter. Weight, mass, density, and volume I put up at the top because they're all kind of related. Color, hardness, dissolvability, freezing and boiling points and conductivity are all separate. So what you want to do is you want to put your boxes and your spaces uh, around here on the bottom. And you want to give some space where you can look at them uh, and draw your examples and things like that. Okay. And if I'm moving a little too quickly, go ahead and pause the video right here so you can make sure you have everything written down. So when we talk about hardness, we talk about how hard it is or how resistant it is for scratching. When you get to eighth grade in Louisiana, and you'll talk about earth science and we'll talk about the Mohs hardness scale. The top of the Mohs hardness scale is the diamond. The diamond is the hardest naturally occurring object. It scratches pretty much everything. The only thing you can really scratch a diamond with is another diamond. On the opposite end is talc. Talc is so soft, you can pretty much scratch it with ease with your fingernails. That's a physical property. Freezing and boiling points are off also physical properties because when we change states of matter, we don't have a chemical reaction. And we'll talk about this when we talk about physical and chemical changes. Freezing and boiling are not chemical reactions. So the temperatures at which a matter changes state is a physical property. The ability to conduct heat or electricity. Copper wires conduct heat and electricity. Wooden spoons don't. We don't use uh, we don't use wooden spoons, uh, wooden pots in order to cook things, just like we don't use copper spoons in order to stir things in a hot pot. That's because copper conducts heat and also electricity much easier. Finally, the ability to dissolve into other substances, the ability uh, for it to break apart and kind of get mixed inside another substance, which we'll talk about at the end of this chapter when we talk about solutions and stuff like that. Those are all those are all physical properties. So to wrap things up with this lesson, we talked about, um, we talked about, well, let's go to our graphic organizer and talk about this. We talked about the physical properties of matter. We know that matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. We know that mass is the amount of matter in an object. The amount of gravity pulling on that mass is called weight. The amount of mass uh, in a particular space is its volume. And the amount of mass squeezed into a particular volume is its density. So all four of these are related and these are really important. Some other physical properties we talked about was its color, its ability to conduct heat or electricity, its ability to at what temperature it freezes or boils, whether it dissolves into a solution or just stays there, or how hard it is. And there's plenty of other physical properties. So there you go. That's your lesson, first lesson for the chapter. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know, and thanks for watching.